our interview this week, Dr. Vincent Isebe talks about how Nigeria can explore its vast agricultural potentials for export. Dr. Vincent Isigbe, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, let's talk about the federal government's plan to boost export of the nation's agricultural products in Nigeria. But we still have issues of that ban since 2015, the ban of, uh, for beans by the European Union. So we're wondering right now, how far have we gone? That ban is still in place, right? Yeah. Can you <laughs> talk more about this? Yes. The critical issue concerned in the ban, in the suspension, was export control. That is how well Nigeria is in control of its export, of its products. Um, the Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service, um, we are duty bound by both protocols, IPPC and um, CPM and whatever, you know, to ensure that any agricultural products from Nigeria is certified. Yeah. Now, the issue of certifications, we had challenges in it as a country because there was a lot of um, adulteration with diclovus which is a chemical storage pesticide. We've been doing a lot of uh, field trials, sampling you know, nationwide to find the level, the present levels of uh, diclovus in uh, usage. And the levels are decreasing from what it used to be. And that should be good news. Now, who are the people still using this? I mean, if it's yes. something that is not um, acceptable any longer. We have to do a lot of sensitization, awareness creation. A lot of people, who are supposed to, you know, do these things, don't know how to do it. And most of the farmers or storage people in the various markets just buy these things, the, the sniper, and just use. Snipers are not supposed to be used on food items. They are recommended storage pesticides that are supposed to be used. But sniper is cheap, sniper is available, and sniper is, can easily be assessed. There was a video that you know went viral last year, 2018, about some some people using sniper in the market on beans. What yes. happened to those guys? Now we don't know where those uh, uh, the video. We don't know the origin. They're not of the, the only guys involved in but this know, practice. Yes. Yes. We know very well that people still use snipers. That's why we do a lot of adverts. If you see some television stations, are you we saying it's just adverts? I just started with adverts. We do a lot of adverts. In fact, this year alone, we have visited so many uh, markets, you know, across the states, both in the northwest, north central, and in the south, you know, to let them know that they should not use snipers, especially the various market associations, because they have con direct control over who sells what commodity. If you go to the market, there's a small association for bean sellers or grain sellers, small association for vegetable sellers. So it is those kind of people that we target because they can pass the information to the rural populace. Are you aware of how dangerous it is to use sniper on bins? So how is it that the federal government did not take any drastic measure to curb this? Well, we've taken all the measures. If you say drastic, Adverts, I don't, I don't know what you mean by drastic. For one, what we know is that anybody who's involved in some of these things, we ensure that the police arrest them, like in Kano. We had a case where not even a sniper, where some people were using just water, plain water, to put more weight on the hibiscus. And with the help of the association, anybody involved in such will not be apprehended and handed over to the police. We have a team of quarantine officers, market associations, and then the exporters themselves have formed an association. So that is a level that we go to to ensure that it reaches the the uh, the grassroots apart from that too even with our own certification you see people going to the banks forging quarantine certificates and applying for from m and funding from the central bank we've seen such and we've written letters both to the police and to the federal minister of justice to investigate and apprehend such people because they are corporate bodies so we are doing quite a lot do not to well, how job. many arrests have you made are you just saying arrests in terms of um, just charge him and then he goes on bail or something uh, th that's why i use the word drastic measures because indeed if if you don't um, uh, curb this in a more drastic way mm. you'd only see a, a reoccurring happening uh, over and over again so what are we talking about here? we must follow due process 
we must pull, follow due process of law to ensure that those are apprehended. If we cut them today, we are not going to tie ropes around their neck. They have to follow the normal process of the police to the courts. And then if they are prosecuted, then they'll be sent to jail. So those are the processes that uh, we are going through. It must be like that. And it's no surprise that we still have that ban in place. On well, the particularly. well, even those who put the ban in place in their own country, so they follow due process. Because it's not, we are not a lawless country. If somebody does something today, we won't go and catch him and throw it into the jail because no jail man or no prison will accept him except the court sends him there. Does, so, it, does this show seriousness on the part of government to handle this? Oh, why not? No government agency will go on the street or catch a criminal and say, you, go to jail. The jail man will not accept him because the process has not been followed. We must accept the fact that, one, if we refer to that video, first impression you have is that the young men there did not know what they were doing because it appears they were happy, even going to show the cameraman what they were doing in their stores. Mm. So that's why information is very, very critical, awareness. Once people know that this thing is harmful, this thing is bad, I will keep drumming it through their heads, either through radio, which we do, and through television, like programs like this, and the adverts we place on television with pamphlets and whatever, that's one strategic means of reaching out to the people. So what is the right way to preserve beans the right from way your to, adverts? Yes. The right way to preserve beans, first and foremost, is to seek for information. Know what the correct chemical to use. So how can we effectively explore opportunities you know, inherent in exportation of agro-products in Nigeria? Export business is not for all commerce because there's a lot of process that needs to be followed. And because the process are stringent, the costs, the unit costs for products meant for export are higher than the local cost, so to say. Because the stringent measures that are put in place because of the international regulations, you need to follow them. That is not to say that we are supposed to eat bad products, no. But because those process cost money to be put in place, the person exporting has to have a cold van, has to have a packed house, has to have people that will do the cleaning and sorting out. He has to wake up very early in the morning if it's vegetables to harvest vegetables between two p.m. I mean two a.m. and three and three a.m. to be able to bring it for us to finish the export certification. And then by between six thirty and seven, the plane takes off. So, it takes money. But what we are saying is that for young men and uh, people who are unemployed and they want to get into this kind of business is for them to come together. Now there was a controversy about the issue of methyl bromide for protection of plants. Can you talk more about this? Methyl bromide is a fumigant. Whatever a fumigant is used to destroy pests yes. you know, and other uh, insects or so to say, you know, to safeguard the commodity. And I will say right away without any fear that pesticides are essential because pesticides have been proven that the usage improves the production by four times. That is 400% increase in production if you use pesticides correctly. So we are not saying that people should not use pesticides. Pesticides are used worldwide, but it's the wrong application of pesticides that is the problem. Amethyl bromide falls into one of such. And it's only the Nigeria Agricultural Quarantine Service that applies and uses pesticides, I mean, methyl bromide, not any other organization. And in the uh, monetary protocol that was mentioned, or that is being mentioned, there are three exemptions. One, if there's a critical need. Second, if there's a need between the importer and exporter that they need to use the methyl bromide. And thirdly, there's what we call QPS, quarantine pre-shipment. Now, those three conditions allow any country to use methyl bromide. So has this been resolved right now? What's the standing? Well, it stands as it is because meta, we can use methyl bromide in this country. Quarantine will use methyl bromide because we can safeguard its usage. All right. Yes. Dr. Vincent Isigwe, thank you for joining us on the Planet Boom Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Well, we thank you for your emails and tweets as always. Keep sending in your views and comments using the email address and Twitter handles on your screen. Also, be sure to share anything happening within your locality. Don't you forget, you can view the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web forward slash videos. Thank you for watching this week. I'm Gloria Omizuki. See you again.